Yeah, so friends, in the last two months, we have seen the first three chakras and the interconnection between the lower chakras and the higher chakras. So today we will go into the, the fourth chakra. So before we go, I just want to uh, quickly uh, reiterate and emphasize that this chakra system, this understanding the chakra system is to understand more about ourselves. It is for our self evolution. Chakras are energy centers, but to have a balanced, to have a balance in all the chakras, the energy cannot be excessive, the energy cannot be deficient, it needs to be in balance. So to have a balance in our energy system, there should be a balance in what we think, in what we speak, in what we do. So everything needs to be, there needs to be a certain authenticity. So in other words, the more you are true to yourself, the more you are working on your chakra system. The more you are true for your own self evolution, the more you are working on your chakra system. And meditation is, is one of the most effective tools which really helps us to balance our chakra system. And uh, many people have many questions like, you know, okay, can I listen to this kind of music for particular chakra so that my chakra gets activated? Or can I go to a chakra healer? Or can I attend a chakra workshop where I can activate my chakras? No, there is nothing you can do about it. It happens. Balancing of the chakras happens very naturally when you start working on yourself. When you start realizing yourself. So when you start on your self-realization, the chakra balancing happens very naturally. So our, our focus is not to balance the chakras, but our focus is for self-evolution. The more we are working on our self-evolution, the more the chakra signs, the chakra energies comes into balance. So that's why this topic is a very interesting topic. It's one of my favorite topics because the more we understand about our own self, the more we identify what are the issues we have, what we need to do, how we can overcome our issues, like you know, the issues of fear, the issues of uh, guilt, the issues of shame, you know, the issues of or the grief and all those, every chakra has a certain negative demon energy. So the more you work on that demon energy, the more you are trying to transform that uh, demon energy into a positive energy, into the energy of your strength, then naturally the chakra comes into balance. So we have already seen the lower chakras. So today we are going to uh, look into the, the fourth chakra, the heart chakra, which is Anahata. So the location of this chakra is near the chest region. That's why it is called the heart chakra. And this chakra deals with love and relationships. The first chakra deals with survival. The second chakra deals with feelings, emotions, sexuality. The third chakra deals with your power, ego, identities. And the fourth chakra deals with love and relationships. What relationship we have within ourselves? and what relationship we have around us. Okay. This is all this chakra about. So what prevents you from being in the heart space? Unfortunately, many people on the planet Earth, they are not in their heart space. So what really prevents? Because when these lower three chakras are not in balance, then by default, you cannot be in the heart space. So the more you are working on this lower three chakras, the more you can work on the higher chakras, the more you can be in the heart space. The more you are in the heart space, the more you are working on the higher chakras. So the heart chakra is the balancing chakra between the lower three and the higher three. So what really prevents, what is the demon energy about for this particular uh, chakra, the fourth chakra is the, the grief energy. So what is grief? Grief is prolonged sadness. So there is a sadness over an extended period of time then that becomes grief. So what is the sadness about? So sometimes, you know, in our, uh, in our uh, families or, you know, in our friend circle, we'll see, we lose our loved ones. You know, some of our loved ones passes away, you know, they vacate their body. Then there is naturally a certain grief. We see that, you know, there is a prolonged sadness for a few days. But this grief, which relates to this fourth chakra, is not about somebody passing away. So this grief, is that you are not in 
connection with your own self, that you are missing your own true self. So when you are missing your own true self for a long period of time, then there is a naturally a grief. So when you are longing for somebody's approval, and when you are not in touch with yourself, you are not loving yourself, you are not accepting yourself, and you're looking for acceptance from the outside, you are looking for approvals from the outside, so then the grief energy comes in, right? And the opposite energy is the energy of the joy. Children are the best examples how to be joyful, right? So as we know, the energy cannot be destroyed and cannot be created. So it can only be transformed. Energy cannot be, neither be created nor be destroyed, but it can be transformed. So this energy of grief can be transformed into joy. So how we are going to transform it and how do you identify your grief in the first place and how do you work on it and how are we going to transform? So these are the these things we are going to see in today's class. So the first, all the abuses of the first, second and the third chakras, they really affect the heart chakra. So that's why I emphasized uh, from the day one that the first three chakras are very, very important. If we are not working on our fear energy, if you are not working on our guilt energy, if you are not working on our shame energy, then there is no way we can work on accepting yourself, connecting to yourself unconditionally. So when, when we, whenever we are discussing about the heart, we should always underline the word, underline the word unconditional. Okay. So for the first time, this unconditional comes into this fourth chakra, unconditional acceptance, unconditional love. Everything becomes unconditional. There is no expectations, right? So all the abuses which makes us feel unlovable, creates a kind of self-rejection. These kind of abuses really affects this chakra. So first chakra abuse, second chakra abuse, the third chakra abuse relates by default to the fourth chakra abuses and traumas. So the one thing you have to understand to simplify the things is anything which makes you vulnerable, Anything which makes you feel unacceptable, anything which makes you feel unlovable, anything which creates a self-rejection, any action in any of your childhood days or even in your adult days, any action that creates a self-rejection in you, that uh, creates a kind of dependency of acceptance on the others, that is the key energy of for the grief. That is the trigger for the grief. And as children, we go through twisted concepts of love. So what is this twisted concepts of love? So as children, we learn from our parents, you know, sometimes the parents themselves, they are the victims of their own past because they never experienced authenticity in their life. They never experienced authentic love. And most of the relationships are mere transactions. Most of the, re most of the relationships are mutual exploitations. So when there is a mutual exploitation, then naturally the, the very concept of love becomes twisted. So if you do this, then I love you. You know, you behave according to what I feel, what according, you behave in a certain way which makes me happy, then there is love between us. So this is something like a twisted concept of love. Okay, you do this, then I love you. You don't do this, then I don't love you. You do this, I accept you. If you don't do this, I don't accept you. So this twisted concepts of love, unfortunately, uh, the parents exhibit because they themselves are suffering. They are the victims of their own past. Family relationships, because this chakra deals with relationships. So what kind of family relationships we are born and brought up? So that becomes our internal dialogue. All the, all the voices we hear, all the criticism we hear from our uh, childhood, they naturally become part of our internal dialogue. You know, that's why there is a saying, like father, like son, like mother, like daughter. Because the, the, the daughter picks, very naturally, the daughter picks up what relationship the mother has with the father. And the son picks up what relationship the father has with the mother. So because the children have the parents as a role model, Superficially, they might say, okay, no, I don't want this kind of relationship, but subconsciously they are repeating the same pattern. Okay, so this family relationships, it becomes an internal dialogue within them. So it is really important. We need to 
uh, we need to connect with ourselves because if you are not connecting with ourselves, then by default, what relationship you have is naturally inherited from your family. That's why you know some people they suggest this inner child workshop and uh, family constellations. All these things are the tools which relates to uh, accepting yourself, which relates to uh, unconditionally accept the way you are. With meditation, of course, it is absolutely possible. With meditation, the more and more you do meditation, the more and more you are going to connect with yourself for the first time. And the more and more you do meditation, the more you start witnessing without any judgment, with, without any criticism. You start witnessing yourself, you start accepting yourself. The more you accept yourself, there is a possibility you will transform. But if you're not accepting, then there is no way of transformation. So acceptance is the key, my dear friends. Now, what happens if this chakra is not in balance? Let us see some of the behavioral patterns. Then it helps us to easily identify, okay, do I need to work on this? How I need to work on this? So identification is the key here. So some of the unbalanced behavior patterns, they are like, Codependency. There is a lot of codependency. For example, you know, you you want to go to some place, you want to go to your picnic, or you want to uh, go to your holiday. Then you say, okay, so if my friend comes, I will come, or if my wife comes, I'm coming. If my husband is coming, I'm coming. So they they cannot take a stand that okay, I want to go to that place. Okay, I am I am going, but they have this dependency. Only if the other person is coming, then I'm going. Even though I want to go, but I don't want to go because there is a certain dependency. And we see there is a lot of codependency you know, between uh, mother and child, between father and child. There is a lot of codependency. Of course, as a child, when you are, uh, when you need help, when you are vulnerable, of course, there is a codependency that is part of the parenting. But when the child is grown up, when the child is already 14 years old, the child has his own intelligence to say what is right and what is wrong. But still you have a, a codependency, always double checking with another person. Am I doing right? Am I doing wrong? You, are, you, don't, you don't connect with your inner voice, but you are trying to have this validation from an outside. So that is still a codependency. And these people, they have poor boundaries and uh, they, they cannot put, have a clear boundary that this is my space, this is my emotion, this is what I feel. That is what you feel. What you feel has nothing to do with me. What I feel is more important. What you feel, yes, of course, I understand what you feel, but it has, it has nothing to do with me because my feelings are my priorities. But these people don't have these kind of boundaries. So these people, they get entangled with others' feelings and others' emotions. So when there is no boundaries, when there is no clear boundaries, then naturally the entanglement comes. Naturally, you go into the karmic cycle. And of course, the discrimination comes, obviously. And then these people, they become very demanding, possessive, clingy, because they become very demanding, they become very possessive. The possessiveness, you know, you need to understand why certain people are very possessive in their relationships. They are possessive because there is a lot of fear. If this person is not in my life, then what's going to happen to me? So who is going to accept me? Who is going to validate me? Who is going to love me? So this possessiveness comes fundamentally because you have a fear. You have a fear. The fear is because you are not connected to yourself in the first place. Because you are not connected to yourself, because you cannot accept yourself, naturally the fear comes, then the possessive comes. Then these people become very clingy. And wherever there is possessiveness and clinginess, then naturally the relationship is obviously destroyed. Right? There is no... Uh, there is no love in this relationship. It's only manipulation, domination. And uh, these people, they become jealous, right? Where there is possessiveness, clinginess, naturally they become very jealous. And uh, these people, they become self-sacrificing. They become self-sacrificing, not for the sake of, not really they, they care about the other person, not because they love the other person. They become self-sacrificing because they want love in return. They want acceptance in return. You know, for example, uh, this is just an example. For example, the mother cooks the food, delicious food. The son is working in another city. Uh, the son comes uh, home on a weekend. Then the mother starts cooking so many dishes. And for example, the mother, the son is, uh, the son says, no mom, I'm full today. I'm not going to eat. Then the mother becomes very sad. Oh, I cooked so many dishes. I thought you really uh, liked my cooking. 
so she feels like okay if you if you eat what i cook then i feel your love so if you are not eating then i feel rejected so this uh, this self sacrificing in return for something is something uh, which is very ugly there should never be a, a self sacrificing attitude whatever you do you should do out of joy not as a sacrifice but as a joy and some of the other unbalanced uh, behavior patterns when this chakra is not in balance you see the previous qualities what we have discussed is something when this energy is very excessive when there is excessive energy in the fourth chakra now this these are the qualities when the energy is very deficient so these people because the energy is very deficient and this particular chakra deals with relationships they are quite anti social they would like to be alone most of the time they don't like to socialize they don't want to make the first move right so they always expect others to come and um, you know have a friendship but these people are very aloof they are very anti social and these people are very very critical and judgmental why they are critical why they are judgmental because they use this criticism and judgment to make sure nobody is coming very close to their uh, circle because these people they have so much uh, fear inside them uh, they there is very very little energy in their heart chakra so the more they use the criticism as a tool to make sure the people are not coming near them right and they are very intolerant uh, they are very intolerant towards their own self and they are very intolerant towards others you know we have we see some people in our uh, in our day to day lives they are very perfectionist they want everything to be perfection they are perfectionist there is no uh, there is no space for uh, imperfections so these people are very hard on themselves and they are very hard to all the people around them so there is very little tolerance so they don't accept the fact like yes everything is a process everything everybody grows and so they don't have that uh, space for tolerance of accepting their self and accepting the others and naturally the lack of compassion and empathy so empathy means your ability to understand what another person is feeling your ability to understand what the other person is going through that is empathy naturally these people have very low empathy because they are so much critical they are so much judgmental they never accept themselves of course there is no empathy and they are very lonely and isolated most of the time and uh, they fear intimacy and relationships most of the people who uh, who remain single and who say okay i don't want to be in a relationship i rather i stay with myself relationships are too much i'm happy with myself so when there is a fear of intimacy and relationships definitely it is a uh, fourth chakra issue and naturally uh, these people they have this uh, narcissism narcissism is a feeling of feeling they are very special the very feeling that i am very special that leads to narcissism like i am special like i am correct like everybody should respect me everybody should respect me because i am special so this is the narcissistic attitude so these are the issues for an unbalanced uh, fourth chakra and how will be the balanced behavior so once all the lower three chakras are in balance and then naturally your fourth chakra is in balance so how will a balanced fourth chakra be so there is of course there is self love so what is self love self love means you are beholding yourself you are very sensitive to yourself you are very kind to yourself you are always very kind to yourself you are a good friend of yourself you are taking care of yourself you know our our life on the planet earth is very very sensitive you know it's like a mirror we should we should take it from one place to another place very carefully if you don't take a mirror from one place to if you like taking a glass mirror if you're not holding it carefully then it drops and breaks into thousands of pieces so it's the same our life is very precious and it should be taken care of very gently so the more you behold yourself the more you are smiling within the more you are happy the more you are radiating lot of uh, compassion lot of understanding lot of friendship lot of love all this comes naturally when you behold yourself and these people they have very healthy relationships and uh, they they are very good at forgiving and they forgive others they forgive others they forgive others because they accept imperfections so when you accept imperfections of yourself then you forgive yourself 
when you accept imperfections of others then it becomes easy to forgive others you understand that is the capacity of him so he is doing his best so when you understand he is the other person is doing his best according to his own evolution then the forgiveness comes very naturally so where there is forgiveness there is compassion and ultimately the unconditional friendship blossoms so this unconditional love and unconditional friendship it's something that you cannot do it should happen very naturally you know it's like a flower uh, radiating the fragrance it's that very natural process when you behold yourself when you accept yourself when you are very kind to yourself naturally this unconditional acceptance this unconditional friendship this unconditional love blossoms it it blossoms as a very quality of the self you don't need to do you in fact you cannot love anybody there is no possibility you can love any person some people say i love you but that statement is not a, uh, that statement is illogical statement how can you love somebody you can say yes i accept you so when there is an acceptance there is a possibility the love happens you can say i like you you can say i like you you can say i accept you so the more there is an acceptance the more love happens the more friendship happens so acceptance is the key for love and friendship so what we can do is acceptance and what happens out of that acceptance is friendship and these are the some of the issues we have to ask ourselves when it comes to this fourth chakra so this is the way we really identify and we really focus and start working on ourselves so the first question is how do i reach out to others do i reach out to others in written for something or do i reach out to others just because i feel like reaching out to others i feel like having an authentic relationship or i feel like reaching out to others in written for something what do i seek from relationships what are you seeking from your relationships any kind of relationship whether it's a relationship from your wife and husband or your friends or any relationship what are you seeking are you seeking approval or you are just wanting this relationship to share your joy what is that you are seeking is there anything you are seeking or you are not seeking anything so this is a very important question we need to ask and the other question is are there any special people in your life so this feeling of special oh he is a very special friend he is really really special person in my life so that means you are putting too much emphasis on a person in written for something so this feeling special everybody is special so when you discover that you are a very very you, you are a very unique person when you discover you are a very unique person then you understand that everybody around you is unique then you understand the fact everybody is special so then there is no partiality this person is special this person is not special i have a very close relationship with this person and the other person no you become open available to have every possible special relationships with everybody from your side you are open to have special relationships to everybody and whatever the relationship it comes in your way it becomes special because you realize the beauty from inside and i'm attached to anyone so when you feel like there's somebody special then the attachment comes very naturally so then again the attachment is a uh, the seventh chakra issue where there is an attachment there is suffering okay so some of the physical disorders uh, which associates with this uh, fourth chakra is disorders of the heart lungs uh, breast thymus arms most of the women they go through the breast cancer because uh, of the lack of self acceptance and self love and if you see most of the breast cancers the women go through because they never accept themselves because the woman has gone through so much of suppression for many many centuries and so naturally the heart chakra blocks and when your heart chakra is in block um, then the woman develop breast cancer the men have heart attacks but the women develop breast cancers and uh, the shortness of the breath and the sunken chest asthma uh, immune deficient system and so the, if your heart chakra is not in balance then your all your immune your entire because your heart is the is the is like a cpu is like the main uh, processor which pumps out all the it's not only pumping out the blood but it is pumping out the life force energy so if this chakra is not in balance then your immune system is uh, naturally in trouble so then there is the tensions between the shoulder blades and all the uh, pain and discomfort associated 
with the, the chest region. Everything is the physical disorders associated with this fourth chakra. Now, what to do? So people ask, okay, I understand. Okay, these are the issues and I have understand some of my issues. So how do I work on myself? So when you ask this question, how do I work on myself? The first point is the deep meditation. So what is the difference between a normal meditation and a deep meditation? In a normal meditation, you are just closing your eyes and observing the breath. And in the deep meditation also, you are exactly doing the same thing. But the difference is in the normal meditation, you are just sitting for like say half an hour per day or one hour per day, which is sufficient enough to receive the cosmic energy or to be in a certain level of awareness to carry on day-to-day -day activities. But if you are already having some certain issues, then you need to do a deeper meditation. A deeper meditation is spending more time with yourself. So the more you do intense meditation, two hours, three hours, four hours, the more you do intense meditation, the more the very nature, the very quality of witnessing happens. You see, witnessing is a quality of the soul. So the more you start witnessing the breath, the more your witnessing quality uh, increases. So you start witnessing everything inside you and outside you. So this very quality of witnessing helps you to accept yourself. So the more deeper you do meditation, the more it helps you just to witness and accept as it is. That is the key. That is the fundamental key, my dear friends. And there's other things we have to really focus on when we're working on this chakra is unconditional acceptance of the self and forgive. Some people say, oh, it's very difficult to forgive because the other person has done so much that it's not possible for me to forgive. If you cannot forgive, at least forget. Forgive and forget, that is the tool. And the other important tool, if you want to work on this chakra, is practicing seva. If you take, uh, what is seva? Seva is service without any expectations. Whatever the service you can do, if you are not expecting anything in return, you're not expecting name, you're not expecting fame, you're not expecting acknowledgement, you're not expecting recognition, you're not expecting anything in return. So if you're not expecting anything in return, then why would you do anything? You're not expecting anything in return, then why would you do anything? You do just simply because it gives you joy. So whenever we are doing things without any expectations, but simply it gives joy that very act gives us the joy and we are doing it for ourselves and not for anybody else when that is the attitude then that is called seva all the major religions emphasized on seva because the more you do service unconditionally the more you are working on your heart chakra you see the heart chakra is like a portal it's like in the middle it's, it's balancing the higher and the lower. So the more you do meditation and the more you practice seva, the more you are simultaneously working on the lower aspects, the lower chakras, and also the higher chakras. This is the key. This is the fundamental key. So if you ask me, I really need to work on myself. Tell me something very simple that I can do. Number one, meditation. Number two, because meditation gives you awareness, and meditation gives you energy. And number two, the more and more you do seva, the more and more you do service, the more you are working on your karma, the more you are neutralizing your karma, the more you are burning your karma, and also the more you are radiating joy. Because when you do seva, you are radiating the joy. Whenever you radiate joy from your heart center, all the chakras comes into a little bit of alignment very naturally, sooner or later. So this is the key, my dear friend.